and the fancy intro music will go here if I had any. Oh well. Hello everyone, it is a Moonlight Night or Viper 1986 1986 here once again. And I got another tutorial for a new program that I found called FF Split. It's currently in its alpha stage, so it's still pretty new. I've played around with it for a few hours and I love it. So I'm going to tell you guys about the program, how to set it up, and, and why I like it. I guess to start off, I'll quickly compare this program to the other streaming applications. Um, XSplit's the, the big main one right now. XSplit is pretty good quality. The biggest downside to XSplit is it's a huge resource hog. It takes up way more memory than it should, and it takes up way more computing power than it should. Wirecast is pretty good, doesn't take up too much memory, but it costs like 150 bucks for the cheapest version there is. The other option that's out there is FME, which it does use a bit of resources, it looks pretty good, and that used to be my favorite one, but now there's, th there's this one. It's really lightweight, really low on resources, and it's equal quality, from what I can tell, is to XSplit so far, and there's not even that many options on here. Um, I guess I will go through some of the basic options and show you guys how easy it is to uh, set up. Alrighty, so this is still an alpha stage. It's version 0.5.1.1. You can download this from ffsplit.com. So let's get right to the app. Um, the current version right now is going to be FF Split. It's going to be 0.5.1.1, and it is still an alpha stage. I'm not exactly even sure how old the program is. I'm pretty sure it's pretty new. So let's go over the options real quick. At the start here, you have video source. Just like with XSplit, when you add a camera, you, I can select my Blackmagic capture card and output from DX Story. I can actually output my XSplit if I wanted to do that for whatever reason, because XSplit also can broadcast out. And if I had my webcam hooked up, I could select that. The FF Split overlay is going to be basically how XSplit is, where you can click and drag different sources and resize them and put overlays and text and whatnot. Since this is still in uh, alpha, the quality of this isn't too good, and I honestly haven't played around with it too much just because I know in due time they will fix it, make it be a lot better. Here's briefly how it looks. You can see right here is my one screen. My right side where I'm work where you guys are watching right now is this side right here. It's a little glitchy. Click on window. I can just say click on. Look at that. That's weird. I actually clicked on. Uh, the CPU usage on the task manager and it just zoomed in that one little area. As you can see, it's stuff is ghosted out. It's it's all in beta. I really didn't mess around with it just because, you know, it's just going to get better and I honestly don't need these fancy features. As I normally use FME, I'm not used to them, so I don't need them, but they're definitely going to come up eventually. And I hope and I trust that these guys will make an awesome overlay window because that is a very nice feature of XSplit. As much as I don't like XSplit, that is the best part about it. The next option is audio source. For most people, you're going to want to select uh, direct sound capture or something like that, and microphone. For me, I use stereo because I have an onboard stereo mixer, and I prefer to use that. The next thing is the bitrate, just like on XSplit or FME. You know, take your internet speed, do anywhere between 65 and 85 percent of that. So if you have a 5 megabits connection, do something like 4 megabits upload. That That's what your max is. Coding present, same thing for XSplit. And I have all this on my um, XSplit lag versus quality video which I will link in the description. Ultra fast is going to be if you have a slower computer and a fast internet it's going to not compress the video, it's just going to take it, leave it a huge huge picture images and then send it out so it needs more bandwidth. If you have a faster computer you can select something else, something slower. It'll take time to compress the video and it'll use more CPU power to do it. This is good if your internet is slow 
or you have viewers that don't have fast internet connections and you want to get good quality with a slower bitrate. Resolution, you can customize this to whatever you want. With XSplit, it's got the option when you hit view, you can change the resolution. With this, you can manually type it in on the fly. Very easy to adjust. Currently, it's set to this because this is what I was outputting my DX story as when I was doing tests with uh, Minecraft. Frame rate, same thing, 24 for most things. Anything with a lot of action or fast paced movements, crank it all the way up to 60 if your computer and your internet and your viewers can handle it. 60 looks the best for first person shooters. Things like Minecraft, even StarCraft look pretty good on 24 or 25. Audio bitrate, bigger number sounds better. Uses a little bit more computer power, not noticeable amount. Of course, stereo sounds way better. And let's see here. This is what's going to be a little bit different for a few people, and it may confuse them. Look at that. It's very conveniently placed on, on FF Split's website. With XSplit, there is, not XSplit, with Twitch TV or Justin TV, there's, there's servers all throughout the world that you can connect to. You can manually select it in your broadcast settings to which one you want to do, and there's like a little ping tester. It's pretty fancy, but you need to figure out the one that you want to use. You can use XSplit to figure out, or you can use, maybe there's something on Twitch TV, or just use common sense. I'm closest to Dallas from this list, so I'm going to copy. I'll even do it all this way. Paste it, and add a forward slash. Okay, and we're going to scroll down here, and I will link this in the description, of course. Then scroll down here, find out your your stream key. Click on this, scroll over on the right, and click Show Key. This key is a, a private key, so I'm not going to click it, obviously. But it's basically going to be the word live underscore blah blah blah. So I will paste part of it in here. So it's going to look like something like this, followed by a random set of numbers and letters and an underscore and something else, you know. Something like this. This, is, this isn't a substitution. Use this instead of a user and password, basically. Recording to the hard drive, record a hard drive, open folder. The quality it records to the hard drive is pretty good. Um, no, I haven't really tested it too much. All I know is I was able to open up the file with Sony Vegas, didn't have any issues with it. It looked better than XSplit's um, recording the hard drive, but didn't look as good as using DX Story to directly record the hard drive. The good thing about this is it's pre-compressed and it's relatively easy to uh, turn on before you start your stream. Alright, the arrow thing here. This is a feature of Vista and 7 that slows computers down. Just leave this disabled even good computers, this can cause big problems with streaming and uh, capturing desktops and whatnot. Uh, I have not actually messed with this. I'm pretty sure I will, but this has to do with debugging because it's an alpha stage. You know, if you have problems and you report it to their site, they may be like, "Oh, we'll do this for us," and you can click on this and follow the instructions. Check for update. Checks for update, and you will be able to put in a stream delay. Oh, that's going to be so nice without paying XSplit money. I paid XSplit money when it was really cheap just because I was one of the beta users and I got the deal and I do not plan on paying for it in the future again just because there's no need to pay for stuff. They make tons of money in advertisements and all that all that good jazz. As far as I know, FF Split is supposed to stay free, which is going to be awesome. And logically the last step to do is just hit start. That is literally it. That is all you have to do. Just like that. And it's streaming. The quality is amazing. Just as good as a... Uh, it's going to give an error because I didn't put my proper key in. <laughs> but the uh, quality is just as good as XSplit. With the resource usage less than FME. Or close, very close to it. I, I believe it is actually less. With XSplit, I cannot stream at 90, 90p. I cannot stream my Xbox at 90p. I cannot stream my desktop at 90p. Using XSplit's Game ID Capture, using XSplit Screen Capture, or going through DX Story, it just slows my computer down so much. Even using the the preview, 10% size. I'm 
not sure why or how they wrote XSplit, but whatever they did, it's a huge resource hog. With uh, FME, I'm able to do, I forget the exact number, but 900 was like the max I could stream at with FME without completely bogging down my computer. Um, when I say bogging down, I'm talking about streaming, uh, say, Minecraft at full 1080p is what I would try. Nowhere, nowhere close to 1080p. Using this program, I can stream at 900p with Minecraft and keep my Minecraft frame rate at about 40 frames per second. Maybe dips down to like 35 if I break a whole bunch of things real fast in creative mode. So this is definitely really good for your computer. Really simple. No issues yet. It's still an alpha, so now is the time to get on, use it, report back any bugs you find, report your problems, you know, give suggestions, you know, get with the get with the program as they would say, because it's going to be nice to have a really good lightweight free alternative to XSplit that doesn't involve using FME or paying crap loads of money for Wirecast. So I hope this video helped you guys out just to at least get the word out there about this awesome program. And I'll see you guys uh on the streams.